Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. You Thank know what? That's so beautiful. And you know, when I was a reporter for Huntley, I can't tell you how many people I did stories on mm -hmm. who were of advancing years and had even been let go by their mission board saying that uh, you're, you're too old. Just go too retire yeah. back home wherever you are. Yeah. And these people were like, I still have a passion for this country I've been serving, mm -hmm. these people that I love. And they have used their retirement funds to go, you know, and live. And sometimes in a third world country, you don't need a lot. And many of them have, have made a work that is larger than anything they did yeah. before the retirement mm -hmm. years. And that's exciting to know that, and that's what the Don't Write My Obituary just yet. I tried to, you know, it, it's 30 real life stories of individuals and couples mm -hmm. who are, I mean, even with all the physical challenges, I mean, they've had cancer, heart issues, macular degeneration, diabetes, you name it, you know, and many of them have been, or most of them have been impacted in some way. They've lost spouses, and yet, in each case, they are still finding ways, mm. you know, to have purpose and to serve God. Mm. Missy, that's encouraging because I have to admit, I am having a hard time thinking about growing old. I, I think in your in your book, it, it was a moment for me to just pause because there is a fear of getting older. Sure. Um, I don't know what it means to age well, and maybe I'm going to ask you what that means. And so when you when you have these kinds of stories, it does it does give me hope that. I won't be like left out or I'll be disqualified because I'm old. And I think there is that thing about wanting to hold on to youth and, and not grow old. So how do I age well? Maybe that's what I'm asking you. How do I do it? When you think about it, our society hmm. tells us that youth is to be valued yeah. and age is not. Mm -hmm. And that's a sad thing. And, yeah. and so I think in order to age well, I think we have to take on a biblical perspective of aging. Mm. You know, look at Moses, look at Abraham, look at, I mean, so many people in the Bible that God used in late years. Mm -hmm. And we've got to embrace that. And uh, yes, there's a fear. I think the fear that people have is the images that they have of people, you know, sitting in a wheelchair in a nursing home alone and no one there and slumped over. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an image that we all mm -hmm. fear. And yet, if we don't want that to be our image, then we need to be the hands and feet of Christ. Mm -hmm. We need to be there encouraging that person. One of my favorite stories, and don't write my obituary just yet, is about a 99-year-old who spent his days, truly, in a wheelchair or in bed. Mm -hmm. and, and on the day that I was interviewing him and visiting with him, and I, I knew him well, and in listening to him talk about his faith and how important his faith had been in his life, and that it was all wrapped up in the mystery of God. He didn't really know why he was still on earth, but you know, he was okay with it. And about that time, a, a double amputee rolled his wheelchair just outside the doorway. And I watched the man that I was interviewing. He gave him a double thumbs up, called him by name, and he broke into a big grin. And I watched the double amputee. As he broke into a big grin, mm -hmm. he lifted his shoulders and, and off he went. Mm. And I thought, you know, sometimes we confuse, we think, you know, in order to be used by God, I've got to do something huge. Mm -hmm. I've got to go to Africa and be a missionary, or I've got to do this or that, mm -hmm. something that's huge. And older adults particularly kind of think that, you know, mm -hmm. they think if I do, you know, it doesn't count if I'm doing something small. Mm. And I always tell them, I said, you know, to you, it may seem minor, to be, but to God, it is major. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was on that day, watching that scene played out before me. And I thought, here was this man, you know, who mm -hmm. was still encouraging someone else. And we can okay. do that. And you remind me of just how many seniors we all have in our lives Absolutely. who could pour knowledge mm -hmm. into our lives. You know, I'm a, I, I'm a young mom. And so I think about you know, seniors that might be able to help me with my son or, you know, practical mm -hmm. things that Absolutely. we think that they're disqualified and that we can't use them anymore. And just simply learning from them is... Absolutely. You know, just this, this week, I was talking to a 98-year-old woman and she made the comment. She said, you know, people talk all the time about how, you know, we older folks are supposed to have such wisdom. <laughs> Why don't they ever ask for it? Huh. Oh, oh, that's good. That's key. Yeah. And yeah. that key, you know? Mm -hmm. And and key. she was very serious. And yeah. I thought, wow, that so was true. that was wisdom just in what she in said. Yeah. 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 Well I love the fact that you what you said, you don't have to do anything huge. Mm -hmm. 
to have purpose, to be useful. I know my grandpa, when my grandma was in a nursing home years ago, my grandpa would go and visit her and play the piano. Mm -hmm. And even after she passed away, he was in his 90s and he would still make yeah. the drive to the nursing home. Mm -hmm. And he would always tell us, I'm going to play the piano for the old folks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and he had made a lot of friends there and he would play sure. the old hymns and they loved it and mm -hmm. he loved them. And really, to have purpose, it doesn't mean a big thing. It could that's be right. a small thing. Oh, that's mm -hmm. absolutely right. I mean, that was a big thing to those people absolutely. that were hearing it. That was yes. huge. Yeah. I remember at the university, um, they had a ministry that you could join, which I did, which was called Adopt a Grandma. Uh, and you could go to yeah, the nursing pretty. home nearby and adopt a grandma. And I did. <laughs> and the woman that I adopted was former CIA, something like that, or FBI, oh, like some wow, kind of like wow. spy. Oh. But she couldn't speak. Huh. So I'd go and read to her and everything, you know. But I think that's the biggest fear. And, and I just wonder for people maybe whose families are too busy or maybe they're estranged mm -hmm. and they're feeling mm -hmm. you write in your book about people who feel very forgotten. Yes. Mm -hmm. what, what advice do you give people like that who just feel like, you know, I've lived my whole life and, I, and I'm so alone now and, and they don't have a lot of visitors at the nursing home and I hear that happens very it often does. at different nursing it homes does. I've been to. Like, what do you, what do you it tell them? It is sad and what, you know, I guess that's the reason I'm such a champion uh, on their behalf and, all, and then trying to get the attention of churches that, you know, mm -hmm. even though these people may not have a church home, churches could step in and mm -hmm. become that friend that they don't have. But it's also the reason that I began to write these books because I realized how many people were out there that don't have, you know, mm -hmm. visitors and are their families live across country. And so in order to help them get the focus off of themselves and onto someone else, you know, mm -hmm. that's key, I think, because, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you're feeling sad and you start thinking about that and that's about all you think, it's easy to sink into that depression. Mm -hmm. And so to turn that um, so that you're beginning to think about your neighbor, whether it's just going next door to share a cookie or something, mm -hmm. but that you get up each day and say, what can I do for someone else? Now, Missy, we've been talking a lot about older adults and finding purpose and value in their lives as well. Let's talk about something that even younger adults deal with, and that is regret. Mm -hmm. Regret's a tough one, particularly as people age, and, and I kind of refer to it sometimes as broken dreams, you know, mm -hmm. things that either they didn't get to do that they had would have liked to have done, or regrets in terms of broken relationships or something like that. And so um, I think there again, helping older adults begin to focus on, um, on God mm -hmm. so that they are more aware of His forgiveness of his love for them that's unconditional. Uh, the, I always say that, that prayer should be at the core of every older adult's life, you know, mm -hmm. because they, they have time to sit and think and worry, you mm -hmm. know, I, I should have done this or what if I would have done that. Um, so I, I think that's really key. And, and in order to do that, churches need to step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. You know, churches need to be more involved. We were just talking a moment mm -hmm. ago about how many um, older adults that don't have anyone to visit them. Mm -hmm. And there are many older adults that have spiritual questions, deep abiding spiritual questions about heaven, about hell, about, you know, all kinds mm -hmm. of things. And yet they don't have anyone to help them answer that if, you know, if they don't have a church family. And you know what else they have is secrets. A lot of older mm -hmm. people have mm -hmm. secrets that they've never told anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of their life, I see many people starting yeah. to unburden to a trusted, uh, you know, pastor right. or, yeah. or friend. And right. I think that's important to do. It is. And in order to have that, they've got to have relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what's key to all this, as I was talking yeah. about the, the youth, you know, building relationships with older people. That is great. Your, your books have really brought a lot of this to light. Missy, thank you for being thank with you. us on Full Circle. A lot to think about. Thank you, thank you for joining us as well. And remember, as always, keep your eyes on Jesus. It's all about Him.